Hello everyone, my name is Danny. This review is for the movie called Vivarium. This is a 2019 film. It is rated R and it runs around an hour and a half. I want to just show this to you. This is IMDB. It says the stars are Imogen Poots, Danielle Ryan, and Molly McCann. That's what it says. And it shows Jesse Eisenberg right there. I don't know why it doesn't say it stars Jesse Eisenberg. Molly McCann is like this little girl. Like, why is she a bigger name than Jesse Eisenberg? That's really weird. So anyways, it stars Imogen Poots and Jesse Eisenberg. The description of this is a young couple looking for the perfect home find themselves trapped in a mysterious labyrinth-like neighborhood of identical houses. Strange. This is Vivarium. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, this is a creepy movie. It uh, comes to me on off of a reference, not even anything that was supposed to be in theaters or anything like that. But with Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen, I figured it could be a theater movie. I don't know why it's not being put out there as such. But uh, I was able to watch it last night on a, one of the platforms of movie watching. And hope other people are able to watch this also, even though it's a little strange. And uh, we'll get to that in a second. But... Uh, yeah, I, I think this is a good movie. Um, I'm just going to put this out there first. I think this is Jesse Eisenberg's worst role. It might be a little bit about the reason why they don't feature his name on the IMDb, IMDb page. Because maybe he doesn't want all that much recognition that he's in this movie. You know, as being one of the top three stars of the movie. I mean, it just blows my mind that I went on there just now, and he's not one of the top three stars listed as starring in this movie. That's just crazy. So, I'm wondering if maybe he realizes that this is his worst role ever, because I think it is. I mean, like, he hasn't done all that much, you know, other than The Social Network and a couple other things, and, well, I mean, obviously, his big movies, you know, but... Um, like, he hasn't done many side projects like this. I guess that's what I meant to say. And for him to sign up to do something like this must have taken something. I mean, maybe they were offering a huge payday or something. But uh, this takes place in England, I'm assuming. Uh, just by the way Imogen was talking and the kids she was teaching and stuff. And uh, the driving was the driver on the right side of the car. So... I'm guessing this took place in England. I don't know why Jesse would take a role from a company like that, but whatever. Um, so that's my first like major point. Like I just it blows my mind, and I could probably talk about it all day about why Jesse took this role. It's his worst role ever. I don't know why he did it. I don't know why he didn't put that much into it. I just I don't understand him him being in this role. I think it was completely wrong casted there. I think, I think a lot of other people could have done something with his role. So, anyways, the story of this is that um, him and his wife are, yeah, they're married. And they're looking for a new house and they get stuck in this crazy world just because they're house hunting. And then they got to they gotta raise this uh, kid. And... So, for however many days, um, you know, I can't give too much of the movie away because I want people to watch it, but it would be a lot easier to do a review about this movie to be able to talk about it because what happens in it is towards the end and, like, the the longer we go with this movie, the, the more predictable it comes and uh, that's kind of the sad part about it is that by the end of the movie, I was saying, uh, let me guess, you know, this happens and this happens, and that's exactly what it does, and it ends. So, um, the sad part about it is what Jesse and Imogen have to go through, why they're going through it the way they are, and that there's supposedly supposed to be a light at the end of the tunnel, but there's not. Uh, I'll put it that way, and that's the most general sense way I can put that. So, other than the storyline, um, 
this is a creepy movie, but I think the other fault that it has is that when Jesse and Imogen are in this crazy place, that this kid that they're raising supposedly comes with like a manual, and the manual's in Chinese or some other language, and I don't know why they did that. Like I like I said, I think this movie takes place in England, and then the user manual for this child is in Chinese. Like I don't know what they're suggesting there or how why they handled that that way. They would have made a lot more sense for the movie for Jesse and Imogen's char characters to be able to read that manual to be able to understand what they're in. But that never comes. Like, this movie kind of dwells and dwells and just kind of has Jesse go through what he's going through and Imogen just kind of existing and not doing much. And, like, we don't ever get that feeling in the movie that we're going to able we're gonna be able to figure out what's going on here. Like, nothing's... We're never going to be explained what's happening. And, uh... There's no big real big reveal either. You know, I mean like like I said, it gets really predictable towards the end. Uh there's a couple shocking moments, there's a couple shocking things. Um the fact that Jesse and Imogen are in this situation is shocking, so when that happens, that's kind of a big deal. But I just don't like how they handle things in this movie. And um the good things to say about it are that it is kind of an original idea a little bit. Um We've seen this kind of thing before, sort of, but I guess it mostly reminds me of the Truman story, but just the fact that everything is centered on these two and like we get to go along on their story a little bit, but um, it's such a strange and weird story that you don't really exactly know what, you know, what the ins and outs of this alien race or whatever is going on. Still don't know after I watched the movie. Uh, whatever's going on with them is uh, is something, and we don't we just don't get filled in. We just get this little sliver of this thing that's going on, and that's it. So uh, I do think that it's good for the setup that it had at the beginning. You know, like what it sets up for people to go through and how they have it happen. It's interesting. It's an original idea. I do like how they handled the movie for the most part. Like, you know, the way that the emotions go and the, the drive that Jesse's character has. And uh, just the emotions and drive to try and figure something out that Imogen's character has. I think those have a lot going for it. And most of the time, I would say... I would say three-fourths of the movie... You're sitting in the first three fourths of the movie. You're sitting there trying to figure it out. You're trying to be intensely involved. You're enjoying, you know, how crazy things are. You're enjoying the characters kind of bouncing off of each other. But it's hard to make movies like this. You know, three people interacting with each other for almost an hour plus. Like, I mean, what do you are are you supposed to be? completely infatuated with every single thing that happens since it's kind of recurring things and recurring days um i don't know it's tough so i think it has a lot going for this uh movie but i just don't know what exactly they were going for i think it kind of falls flat a little bit but i enjoy movies like this i like concepts like this so i'm gonna give vivarium a b minus i think that's pretty fair for probably above the grade other people will give it because I think a lot of people could get frustrated with this thing. You know, I mean, when you have a movie that is predictable, that goes a little slow, that doesn't really answer any questions, I think those three things are three strikes for a lot of people. I think this movie could be a lot lower grade for a lot of other people, but I enjoy Jesse Eisenberg. I like Imogen enough, and I think they were fine together, and... I just don't think they know what they were signing up for here. You know, I think this was terribly miscasted. And I just think the story could use a lot of work. And maybe it felt like it was a little put together because it made sense enough and it was an hour and a half. But uh, I think it could have used a lot more work. I think it could have been longer and explained itself a lot more. But 
you know, in the end, you just don't care because they don't provide the facts, so you're never going to find them out, so then you just let it go. <sighs> I tell you, these kind of movies, you know, you can talk a long longer for because they're interesting. You know, it's sci-fi. It's, it's something to talk about. And I think people will have discussions about a movie like this, but, um, you know, in the end, you don't get the facts, so you don't really... You, you, it's all open to interpretation. It's all open to a discussion, and that's about all we get. So, a B- minus for me, though, for Vivarium. Thanks a lot, guys. My name's Danny. If you like this or any of my other videos, try and get some of them to watch. Like and subscribe to my channel if you would. Enjoy your movies. Thanks.